and tonight I'm going to be doing a tabletop review of a couple of different knives. The first one is the Habilis Bush Tools Trapper. I have to remember to I remind myself I was mispronouncing it before, but it's pronounced Habilis Bush Tools. And this is the Habilis Tra Trapper. Um, I'll just go ahead and read off the specs right now. Um, it's full tang, a 1095 car high, high carbon steel with a Rockwell hardness of um, about 57. It's got G10 scales, um, orange and black. You can also get them in two other colors. Uh, I'm not exactly positive um, what the other ones are. One of them is a gun, a gun metal. It's kind of a gray and black. And I can't remember the other one, but um, I'm going to give you links to the website so you'll be able to look them up. Uh, overall length is nine and eight inches. The blade length is seven and uh, or four and seven eighths. The cutting edge is about four inches. It's three sixteenths inch thick. It's got a pseudo scanty grind, which um, now it has what I call a convex scandy because I've t it had the pseudo scandy before it had a, a slight secondary bevel and what I did is I removed that and convex the whole thing to 25 degrees um, on each side. It has a gun blued finish which I really like a lot and it also comes with a bow drill divot and um, it's got a finger choil that, that allows you to sharpen it all the way back to the, the um, easily all the way and then you can choke up if you need to do fine carving tasks. This knife, now I'm done with that, this knife has become one of my all-time favorites. Uh, it's great to carry. I really like the looks of it. The um, grips are extremely comfortable. It's really ergonomically done. Uh, it also, I forgot to mention, it also has two lanyard holes, one up front and one in the back. And this, the one up front is also for a lanyard. It's, uh, it was not really advertised to uh, tie it to a stick or anything, but th there's some people who like to have a, the lanyard up here. But I did, a, I'm, and I've got videos that I will um, link to this, but I did a lot of um, batoning with this. I made several bow drill sets. Uh, I've carved feather sticks. I've carved tent pegs. Uh, I really, really enjoy this knife. The weight of it, I got a scale here. I'll see how much it weighs with the lanyard. is nine and a quarter ounces and with the sheath it's fourteen and an eighth ounces, no fourteen and a quarter ounces uh, that brings me to the sheath I set it up as a dangler I put uh, two uh, key split rings on it I put two on there because of the way my um, I have a clasp but grabs it like that and having it this way keeps the knife um, in this position alongside my leg without that it's either like this or like this so I added an extra little small key ring it comes with a lanyard loop All right, I'm sorry it comes with a it comes with a fire steel loop and what I did is I bought a fire steel this is the army size, I think it's 3 8 I, I got the one with a hole in the end of it and I put another key ring in there and then put a, a lady's hair tie so that I can just put this right in here and then fasten it down. I find that I like longer, larger um, fire steels for my knives so I just always buy one of these. I think it's four inches by three-eighths of an inch. 
the um, sheath is really well designed and it fits really the knife fits in it really comfortably you can see it um, doesn't go in really far or stick out really far it's just about perfect once again this is the Habilis Bush Tools Trapper okay I would give this knife a 9 out of 10 I like it that well it's uh, one of my favorites okay the next one I want to um, talk about is the Gerber Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro survival knife I had the Ultimate um, survival knife and I wasn't very fond of it it had um, it had a serrated part of the blade was serrated I didn't really like that part of the knife. Uh, then they came out with the non-serrated version, but I just didn't purchase it. And then when they came out with the um, Ultimate Pro, where almost everything was addressed that people didn't like, I picked this up and I really like it a lot. Uh, I was actually surprised how much I liked it. Um, it comes with a nice case, and there's what it looks like. This one also is full tang. That was one of the things the other one wasn't. It's 3 16 inch thick, full tang. The, the steel is, um, I'll just go over the specs. The steel is 9CR19 MOV, which is uh, real similar to um, 420 stainless steel. So 420 is a lot more robust than 440. 440 has a lot more, I think it's chromium. So it tends to be brittle, and that was one of the issues they had with the other knife, the tips breaking off and things like that. Um, so this one's like a 420. So what you lose by going to 420 or steel like that is it's not quite as um, stain resistant as like 440, and that's what they had before. It wasn't 440, but I'm, I don't remember the exact uh, designator for it, but it was a, um, a version of 440. Uh, the, as you can see, it's full tang. The scales are a combination of uh, soft and hard uh, polymers. It's extremely comfortable in your hand. I've used this a, a lot and have not really had any um, hot spots in my hand uh, at all. And I also like it's got a finger choil here so you can choke up. But the best part about a choil is it leaves you room to sharpen all the way back to the very um, heel of the blade. Uh, when the when the blade sharpened all the way to the handle, there's some sharpening systems that um, don't quite go get in there, and so you lose out right at the very front. But as I said, it's full tang. Its overall is length is 10 inches. The blade length is 4.8 inches, and the weight of the knife is 11.2 ounces. With the sheath, it's 14.7 ounces. Um, the sheath has a... Um, one of the things about the sheath... They changed the sheath also. It's got a built-in fire steel um, right here. Uh, this little lanyard came on the knife, and I put it on the fire steel because I was having trouble actually pulling this out with my just my fingers. So I changed it so that I could actually grab it easier on the bottom or the uh, back side of the sheath is a pull through sharpener it's just a carbide um, it's two set of carbide blades and it's one of the ones that you just drag the knife through it uh, I, I really like the sheath it's um, I, I like it better than the other sheath but I'm not a big fan of this type of sharpening system but I always sharpen mine with a work sharp or uh, water stones and then I strop them and this knife was very sharp when it was brand new and now um, it still shaves hair so 
you can you can really get that I don't know if that shows up much but that lights by my arm it's missing hair um, also it has a a place for you to strike the ferro rod they've taken the uh, coating off and put a really good 90 degree edge um, on the back of the blade this knife also I did a lot of batoning and uh, making fire sets for a bow drill and feather sticks uh, tent pegs that kind of thing all the tasks that you would do um, for like bushcraft or survival type things oh I forgot to mention here this has a much better um, pommel it's it, the other one also had a, a uh, I'm not sure what that's called, checkered, I guess a, a checkered pommel. Um, and what I would use something like this for, I know a lot of times people see you see somebody pounding tent stakes, stakes or saying that's what it's for. I don't like that. If you miss, you're going to be stabbing your hand with whatever you're trying to hammer in. Um, I would typically use this if I had to... Um, drive the knife into something so yeah, you'd be hitting this with a, a, a baton or you know a rock or something if I had to but this is the Bear Grylls Ultimate Pro survival knife and um, I have found fit and finish everything that I didn't like about the other one this one um, it took care of they're, I don't think they're made in the United States I think they're still made in China but some of the things I've seen come out of China are, have been uh, really well made so um, our world's getting smaller and smaller so um, I like to buy things that are only made in the United States but a lot of times that's um, the st stuff I've seen coming out of there lately has been pretty good it's held in there with a really good retention system and then it also comes with I don't really care for a Velcro tab, but um, it has a Velcro tab right there to, to hold the top of the blade. But it, the nice thing about this is it doesn't rattle around or anything. It's really quiet. I just think they did a great job on it. Um, the loop for your belt is back on the back. It's not very big. I don't I don't use them, so I didn't care, but that's that'd be an issue for a lot of people probably. I did dangler thing like I do on all of mine. So in conclusion with the Bear Grylls knife I would recommend this knife for um, maybe somebody that's just getting started um, or somebody that wants to you know not spend very much money and they just want like one of their first knives and they, but they want something that's more heavy duty than like a, say a Mora which is most people that's their first knife um, I have a couple of Moras I love how, how they cut and that's mostly because of the fact they're so thin um, but the for something that's more robust I would rather have something like this if um, I was going to be prying or doing anything abusive I would rather have something like this so my uh, thoughts on this knife is I would say out of 10 it's probably a 7 a 7 or 7.5 out of 10 I actually really enjoy using this knife and the one nice thing about it too is um, I don't have to worry about you know if something happens to it I'm not going to be all that bummed out so, once again, I think that this knife would be a good one for somebody that's starting out that maybe, or somebody that really likes Gerber products. When I was young, Gerber was like the last word in knives, and it seems like they, the older I've gotten, the more bad press they've gotten. I think maybe it's because they sent so much stuff offshore. Uh, but I definitely think this knife is worth the money and I I think that they kind of hit a home run on this one my only 
in fact, the only th improvement I could make on this one is if they made it in the United States with U U.S. materials. Other than that, I think it's a pretty dandy knife. So, I've got a couple other knives that I've been working on. Um, I'll be reviewing them a little later on, um, and I'll just kind of give you a preview of what those are, because I've had this one for a really long time. Uh, this is the Bushcraft, Bushcraft Northwest, um, and it's the uh, BCNW-01. And it stands for 01 steel. Um, this knife is uh, another great knife. This is one that um, I've grown to love my, also. Uh, these are made by um, Wood Bear, which is a U.S. knife maker. And they're made for um, Bushcraft Northwest. And I looked online, and now you actually are getting them straight from um, Wood Bear. And the other th nice thing because of that is um, there's all kinds of different options you can get with that with this knife. And the last thing is I just wanted to show this thing off. I was looking in uh, Morse Morse uh, Kuchansky's, uh book, and he was talking about tri sticks and just practicing making notches. And so, last night I this I used this Condor Bush Lure knife, which um, I haven't had this long enough to do a review on it yet. But I really, this is another knife that uh, made in El Salvador, but the fit and finish on it is fantastic. Uh, I couldn't believe how nice it looked. And plus, the handle scales I have um, I rubbed wax on it and it's unbelievable how beautiful that wood grain became but anyway I just made this um, tri stick which is act was actually pretty fun and it didn't take hardly any time but it's fun to practice different notches and like this one was the the one where you uh, for pot hanger and this is just a square sided notch this is a normal tent peg notch this one's like a trapezoidal or a dovetail I guess you'd call that a dovetail notch. And then this one is just a rounded um, notch like you'd see a, a saddle for like a, um, a log cabin for uh, some of the no logs are notched like that. And then I pointed the end and then the last thing was um, drilling a hole. I don't know if you can see that. I cut a straight, uh, I cut a rectangular hole in that you have to kind of thin the, thin the wood first and then cut it out because you're, you're just working with the point of the knife. But that was fun. Well, I hope you enjoyed this short tabletop review. Uh, I've got a lot more to come. I haven't actually done any tabletop reviews yet. I've just been working in the field with them. But um, especially now that the weather's turned really horrible, um, I think I'm going to knock off some of these um, tabletop reviews that I've got stacked up. Well, this is John Newton once again, and please um, subscribe to my channel, like the video, and as always, I love getting your comments, and until the next one, God bless.